Well, good morning, everybody. Please uh, take your seats, and we can start for a wonderful morning on a wonderful day with a wonderful laureate. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me, and my name is Jan Fritjof Bernd, I should say, for those of you who do not know me. I am the chair of the Ludwig Holberg Memorial Fund, and it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you to this symposium in honor of this year's Holberg laureate, Natalie Simon Davies. And the subject of this uh, symposium is uh, the doing decent and history, the global in the local. And as most of you will know, this is the seventh Holberg Prize event we have. And uh, the Holberg Prize was set up by the Norwegian Parliament as an attempt to increase the attention to um, humanities, uh, law, theology, and, uh, and, uh, human and um, social sciences. Uh, with the, main point, the main point being that these uh, branches of science, to a very great degree, is, are neglected in the, the ordinary public debate. There are so many prizes about excellent uh, natural scientists medicine, in medicine and so on, uh, but we feel that uh, having more attention to the importance of these sciences as a part of our cultural understanding of, and of our society is uh, very, 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 very necessary to increase on these days. Um, this uh, symposium, of course, has, uh, uh, is in honor of this year's laureate, but it's also a part of our own selfish thinking about this thing. We do not only wish to, uh, to um, honor this year's laureate, we do not only wish to give more attention to her and other, uh, other cultural scientists' work, we also indeed want to bring together uh, eminent scholars from these fields to Bergen in order to have the opportunity to listen to them, to hear an exchange of ideas and criticisms. So this symposium is uh, a part of what we are getting. It's all a part of the bargain. We are getting all these fantastic scholars coming to us and we can listen to them and we can get wiser. And I look so very much forward to this morning session, which I think we all will enjoy so much, both because we have such an interesting topic, because we have such an eminent laureate, and because we have such an excellent panel. So I then, I believe the floor to the, to one of our moderators, Professor Ida Blom, who will take you through the proceedings together with Erling Jelsvik, please. Erling Sandvo. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is the Holberg Memorial Prize that has been this year awarded to Natalie Simon Davis. And I think that if dear old Ludwig Holberg had been here, he would have been very happy and very satisfied. Um, mainly because for the first time a historian gets the prize. And we usually think of Holberg as a playwright writing all these funny comedies that are still um, shown at the theatres, and even this winter it was shown here, and it was sold out for months, actually, one of his comedies. So we tend to forget that Holberg was also a historian. Now, if we go about 300 years back in time, he started writing in Danish, which was then quite an event, the first uh, history of Europe, and the title was Introduction to the History of the Most Eminent European Countries Until the Present Day. That was his first historical writing. After that, he wrote another book, which earned him a very severe debate with one of his colleagues. And it seems that that has discouraged him a little bit from doing history, because that was when he turned to writing all his plays. And we are so thankful that he did, because we still continue to enjoy them. But after a while, he went back to doing history. And he wrote a three-volume history of Denmark, also in Danish. And for a very long time, this was considered the very best history of Denmark ever written. We tend to forget that when we speak about Halberg. Um, he was also a wonderful teacher. He was, of course, a professor at the University of Copenhagen. And he used to teach his students that history was not just about remembering the dates and the big events and all the figures. It was about trying to understand why things happen, trying to explain why things happen. And he said that he did not look as history, at history as the result of God's will, but as of the result of human agency. 
So he's very modern in a way, in his way of thinking. Um, even if he didn't think of history as a result of God's so, will, he was interested in religion because his next publication was a three volume, The History of the Church. And after that, very shortly, he wrote The History of the Jews. So religion to him was also something that um, took his uh, attention. And we know, which is where he was really advanced of his time, that he was interested in gender. He wrote historical biographies. In uh, 1739, he published the, the first one, The Comparative History of a Number of Great Heroes and Renowned Men, which was very natural. But a few years later, he published another volume, The Comparative Histories of a Number of Heroines and Renowned Women. So gender was also part of his understanding of history. <clears throat> of course, writing history 300 years ago is very different from what we do today. But still, I'll take the chance of comparing Halberg a little bit to today's laureate. I think in some ways he decentered history. He looked outside the national borders to the rest of what was then the world, Europe. He looked at religion, and he was interested in gender. So they have something in common. And if we, if we turn to, if we include his comedies, we will find that class was also on his mind. Because in most of his comedies, who find the good solutions? Who define the problems? Who make the masters make the right choices? The servants do. The servant girl, Panilla and the servant boy, Henrik, are those who always solve the problems. So, decentering history, looking outside the national borders, looking at religion, looking at gender, looking at class, was something that Halberg initiated in a way 300 years ago. So, thank you, Erling. Dear esteemed guests, colleagues, audience, enlightened public, um, it's a great honor and a, and a thrill for me to, to welcome you to this symposium on doing decentered history, the global and the local, which is part of the celebration of Professor Natalie Zeman Davis, this year's laureate. The theme of this symposium, I'll, I'll be talking just about the theme for a minute or two uh, to introduce you to it. The theme, uh, Doing decentered history reflects important long-term developments in the historical discipline. It's a long time since history was the history of great men and great events, which, with history as an aspect of the expanding Western civilization, gradually giving life and enlightenment to the rest of the world. This view of the past was challenged by new kinds of historiography on workers, on women, on non-Western societies. The concept of decentered history implies the idea of a historiography which does not have a given center, but rather moves between places, works comparatively, concerns itself with that which is contemporaneous, the multitude of events and peoples and world views at any given moment. Difference become, becomes an issue of variation and heterogeneity, not of development. In Natalie Zeman Davis, extremely impressive body of work, decentered also means that history can be written in extremely fruitful and interesting ways when studied from the point of view of past marginalities by grasping and following those who are in highly specific and often precarious situations, situations that force themselves and others to pose fundamental questions about themselves and the society they were part of. In other cases, the marginality would consist of poverty, privilege, solitude, or movement between cultures. Decentered, then, is a concept that can mean many things. It is decentered in its own way, even though, paradoxically, it implies the existence of a center from which we can still try to establish various kinds of distances. Our guests have been invited to reflect on the idea of doing decentered history as experts in fields that have responded to it in various ways. So I return the word to my co-moderator, Ida Blom. 